My name is John Yampieri, uh, born and raised in West Baltimore, now presently living on Eastern Shore. When I started seeing my first screens, I was a little boy with my dad. I shuffled with him everywhere. We would go to all these different neighborhoods. I would notice these window screens and became enamored. I love painting iconic pictures of Baltimore. I do a lot of birds, animals, people, and natural settings, the ocean, the bay. I've done just about everything. I mean, I, you know, I look around, it's, it's kind of a, a mod podge of things that I do. I just love doing all of it. Would you like to see a little magic? Imagine you're on the inside of your home or business. You're looking from the inside out and you can't see anything. But from the outside looking in, you can't see inside. And this is the magic of screen painting. It's the best. <laughs> I don't know what to say. And you know, you, you get hooked. And this is why I get to share the magic with whoever may be interested. I've been very fortunate over the years to be teaching the art form from five to 90. People are just mesmerized by this simple folk art. We're here to learn a very, very special and very unusual art form. If you grew up in certain areas of Baltimore, uh, you may have seen these. And what you're gonna be doing is you're creating with nothing and then you're gonna end up taking home something that you yourself created, which is the best. The thing that makes screen painting so special is its historical content. Back in 1913, there was this Czechoslovakian born gentleman, his name is William Octavec. He decided to open up a grocery store and he's looking at the screen door entrance of his business. You know what? I've never seen anybody do this before, but I think I'm gonna paint it on the front door screen entrance of my business. Voila! Back in 1913, no air conditioning. East Baltimore, there are not many trees. There's macadam, concrete, brick, lots of heat. So if you could avoid using curtains or shutters, you could have air flow through your house and at the same time have privacy. And then it was like many other things that happened if the Adams have it, then the Smiths have to have it, and if the Smiths have to have it, the Jeffersons have to have it, and it just kept multiplying to the point where, conservatively, by the 1960s, there were 150,000 screens in the city of Baltimore. I think that is a very conservative estimate. I think it's much closer to 300,000. Baltimore City is the only city in the world where you had people painting their screens and decorating their house. Major swaths of predominantly East Baltimore were museums. They were just, it was one gallery after another. and it, it was just a wonderful experience. We are standing actually in the front of a house of good friends of mine. This is a screen that I painted for them. They had this great garden with chickens. But in the city, you're not allowed to have roosters. You can only have chickens. So I thought for sure that what they needed was a rooster in the neighborhood. But I feel like I left part of me in their house. That was important to me because they were a big part of my life here. It's so wonderful to be able to share this art form. Screen painters are very unique in as far as we don't mind sharing. And that's one of the reasons that I find it so blessed to be able to be part of this. He's an incredible teacher. There's these techniques that John has developed and he's willing to share them. Everything that he has learned and has perfected, he's willing to give away. And there are not many people like that on the face of the earth. We do want the next generations to know about the folk art. I've taught thousands of kids up to this point, and the end result, they get to see what they've created. I love seeing the joy on people's faces. It's simple, it's a simple folk art. Yet, we need a lot of smiles in this world, and to be able to have that opportunity to spread some joy is what it's all about to me. It's just a beautiful thing. 